Hello everyone, Pastor Robert Mullen here. Uh, it's good to have this opportunity and take this opportunity to share this message with you. Uh, and I hope that this finds you well and that you are safe and staying healthy. And of course, remember, we're always praying for you. Uh, just a couple of things to remind us in ways that we can stay connected. As you know, uh, you can always get a hold of me uh, either by text or phone call or email if you have an emergency or you just simply need something. Uh, and then the other way that we can stay connected, of course, is um, by your continuous uh, giving. Uh, you know, the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 2, that on the first day of every week, each one of you should set aside some of your money in proportion with your income and give it as your offering to the Lord. So always uh, remember that's another way that we can stay connected. And also another way to stay connected is by watching this uh, video and, uh, and then also sharing it with other folks that you might know uh, that you know would be benefited from this. And so we just wanna encourage you with that. Um, also a reminder that life is always better when God is first and that remember God said he would never leave us nor forsake us and that we are reminded that we'll never walk alone. But this morning I wanna just start off with uh, what I'm gonna talk about is how we can have victory over our current situation and beyond. But let me go ahead and begin by praying and then we'll get right into the word of God. Just wanted to encourage you to get a piece of paper, get your Bible out, get a pen, and just take notes. I'll try to go slow enough with the verses of scriptures so that you can jot them down but then also refer back to them uh, after we're done with this message. Uh, so let's go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you for the privilege that we have, Lord, to uh, be able to share this message of hope to each and every one and reminding us, Father God, that we're in this together, that we're walking life together uh, during this difficult time and that we can be encouraged now, Father, I pray your blessing upon me as you anoint me to bring this word. May it carry through this video to all of the listeners, Father God, and maybe even beyond just the local church, but Lord, the world, Father. And so, Father, we pray and we honor you and glorify you and we exalt you and we crown it all back to you, Father God, because you're deserving of that. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So again, a victory over our current situation. Now we know that all of us are in a time of crisis and that we are a people of faith that have to stand together and refuse to panic. And I trust that you're standing in faith and that you're not in panic and that you're not operating in fear. Uh, we have to release our faith uh, for wisdom, asking God for the wisdom. We have to activate our faith concerning health and staying healthy. Uh, we have to activate our faith concerning a provision that God is our supplier and that we also are praying for the protection and freedom from all fear. So regardless of what area in your life that you might be challenged with or faced with, uh, whatever the situation might be, remember that when we release our faith concerning all of these areas, then we are not operating in fear, but we're operating in faith. And we are reminded in the word of God, we find in 1 John chapter 5, verse number 1 through 4, 1 John, that's the epistle of 1 John chapter 5, verse number 1 through 4. The Bible tells us, and the heading is overcoming the world. And the writer says, whoever believes that Jesus the Christ is born of God, and whoever loves the father loves the child born of him. And then verse two, by this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and observe his commandments. Verse three, for this is the love of God that keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. And then number four, verse four says, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world and this is the victory that has overcome the world our faith. So if we're born again, a child of God, then the scripture tells us because of that, we have the victory and that we have overcome the world, our faith. So when we activate faith, and remember last time I spoke, I shared with you 
out of Romans chapter, I believe it was chapter 10, where, you know, God had dealt every man the measure of faith. So we've been given the measure of faith uh, to live by and that we're to grow our faith and to mature in that faith. And we're certainly living in that time now where we are challenged with our faith. So, but you know what, when, we're all, when it's all said and done and we pass through this test, we will definitely be stronger in our faith and, uh, and have confidence in God even more that he uh, is gonna help us through the next test that we're gonna be facing. But I wanna just say this, that you know, we know that the world is uh, in a serious trouble or is in serious trouble. We know that. However, we who are in the household of faith, meaning born again, children of God, we have, to, we have the opportunity to cling to the word of God. We have the opportunity to listen and to obey the word of God. And, and I wanna encourage you that that's a must. Uh, if God's gonna help you and help us through this difficult time and being part of the household of faith that we have to uh, cling to the word of God, the promises of God, and to listen to and to obey them. And uh, Paul also tells us in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12, that we have to fight the good fight of faith. So faith and fighting the good fight of faith and doing that and enduring and persevering through everything, we have to have faith in our life. So the question is, are you part of the household of faith? According to Galatians chapter 6, verse 10, then if we are, then I want to remind you that we are in this thing together and we're doing this together. And, uh, and so uh, I believe in unity. I believe in walking together in agreement and even prayer, uh, walking together and living life together, but also praying together and being in agreement. And so that's what I want to take us uh, to this morning is to uh, carry us um, with some scriptures, um, praying together in agreement, and uh, asking God to help us with uh, what we're going through. So the first thing that I want to uh, say is this, that we are, of course, facing uh, challenging situations concerning those things, but Christian people everywhere, when they pray, and that's what I want to talk about this morning, will overcome this disease. When Christian people everywhere pray, then they'll overcome whatever circumstance. So being in agreement is extremely important and it certainly is biblical. So there's just something powerful uh, that takes place when believers agree in prayer according to God's word. And his word is an unbreakable covenant that he has uh, with us and uh, you don't want to walk alone during this difficult time and we want to reach out to you but reach out back to us and uh, let us know whatever it is that you need in prayer but uh, I want to give, give you a scripture that uh, Matthew the writer of the, of the gospel of Matthew he says this in Matthew chapter 18 we find in verse 18 through 19 and 20, it says this in Matthew 18, verses 18 through 20, and this is a foundation to our prayer of agreement. And we say, and, and the Bible says this, Verily I say unto you, whosoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whosoever shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. So we may not be physically together right now, but I want you to know that we are gathered in the name of Jesus, walking in agreement. And when we do that, we can expect to see the manifestation of God's power as we release the prayer of faith in agreement uh, that we're gonna see this thing through. We're gonna pros be prosperous. In fact, we're gonna be more prosperous even during this most difficult time. And remember, words carry a lot of power. So make sure that when we're praying, we're praying the word of God 
And the word of God, of course, are the promises of God. Now, um, let's agree right now together, and I'll give you some more scriptures um, that we're going to use. We find in John chapter 16, verse 23, where we're gonna come together in agreement concerning this passage of scripture here, and we're gonna simply say this, Father, in the name of Jesus, we stand in agreement according to the living word of God in John chapter 16, verse 23, the Bible says, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you that my Father will grant you whatever you ask in my name. And then he said in Mark chapter 11, verse 24, Mark chapter 11, verse 24, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe, trust, be confident that it is granted to you and you will get it. So when we pray in agreement in the name of Jesus to the Father, we can rest assured that God will grant us whatever we ask in his name. And remember, what we're asking are in agreement with the word of God, that God wants us to have health, that God wants us to be saved, that God wants to prosper us in every area of our life, that God wants us to enjoy the freedom from fear and to have his protection. So we release that and we're in agreement right now. Now concerning our covenant of health and welfare, that's another prayer that we can pray. And we wanna stand on a scripture. So whatever you're dealing with in your health or welfare, Here's a scripture that we can stand on and we can pray together in agreement and it's found in Psalms 103 verses one through five. Psalms 103 verses one through five. Bless the Lord, O my soul. <clears throat> Excuse me. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgives us all of our iniquities, who heals all our diseases, who redeems our lives from destruction, who crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies our mouths with good things so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. So we are healed and made whole in the name of Jesus. Our families will walk in perfect health. We lift up all who have been affected by this virus and believe for their deliverance. And we thank you, Lord, for our good health in Jesus' name. And I want you to repeat that over and over again, even when we're done here today, and just stand on that promise and on the word of God concerning your health and welfare. The second thing concerning our covenant of protection is from disease. We can stand on the scriptures found in Psalms 91, verse 10. I already released that psalm to you already a couple of weeks ago. I hope that you're still standing and reading that every day. Psalms 91 from the very first verse all the way to the last one. But concerning this uh, protection from disease, Psalms 91, verse 10. There shall no evil befall us, neither any plague come near our dwelling. So we are protected from all effects of this coronavirus and other sicknesses and diseases. And we take our authority in Christ over that disease right now in Jesus' name. It will not touch us or any of our families. And God has highly, it has a highly exalted Jesus and has given him a name which is above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of names in heaven and names in earth and names under the earth, according to Philippians chapter two, verses nine through 10, and coronavirus, you are a name. Bow your knee right now to the name of Jesus, which is above every name, the name of Jesus, and we thank you, Lord, for your protection from disease. So make that confession on a daily basis for God's divine protection. So that was Psalms 91, Verse 10, uh, another one that, another covenant is this, covenant of provision. Now we need to stand on scripture concerning our provision. Now we a familiar passage of scripture that I know that I've quoted many times found in Philippians chapter four, verse 19. I'm getting a little excited about it. My faith is being activated and rising high on another level and I hope you're feeling it and receiving it in Jesus name. 
But here's what Philippians 4.19 says concerning our covenant promise uh, concerning provision. But my God shall supply all of my need and your need, our needs, according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. You know what? We believe together that God is the source of everything. Say that with me. God is the source of everything. And, and everything that we need during this time and even after this time. He is our provider and supplier. We will not fall short financially or in any other way. And we thank you, Lord, for supplying everything we need in Jesus' name. So we release that promise that you will not lack in any area of your life and all of your needs will be met in Jesus' name. Another covenant that we have, another promise from the word of God is the freedom from fear. Uh, you know, the Bible tells us when we stand on 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, that we're not receiving and we don't have the spirit of fear. And it tells us God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That's 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. So stand on that scripture that I have not. God did not give me the spirit of fear. I refuse fear to dominate in my life. I have received the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. So Lord, I release sound mind on every person that's listening to me right now in Jesus' name. So we refuse to fear. We refuse to panic. We refuse to worry. And we cast all our care and our anxiety of, over, of all of this over unto you, God, because care, you care for us according to 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Thank you, Lord, for our freedom from fear in Jesus' name. So you say to fear, get out of here. You don't belong in my life. I have the spirit of power and love and of a sound mind, I receive that in Jesus' name, and I cast all my cares over to him. Why? Because he cares for me. The next thing I wanna talk about concerning um, our government and the world governments, we have to also keep that in mind. And we wanna stand on scriptures concerning that as well as we pray in agreement and release this prayer in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses one through three. First of all, we offer supplication and prayers, intercessions and giving thanks for all men. That's how we release first. For kings and for all that are in authority, we pray for them that they may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. So we wanna speak blessings and that God will lead them and guide them in agreement with his word and how they should lead us and this nation and all of the governments around the world in Jesus' name. So we pray for the President of the United States or, uh, and the leaders of other countries around the world and who are in authority to walk in the highest degree of God's wisdom. We pray for the medical professionals, public health officials, and first responders all who are involved in Jesus' name. So Lord, we pray and release that prayer uh, for our president and leaders around the world uh, and those that are in an authority and all of the workers who are responding and helping, Lord, that you be with them in Jesus' name. Uh, the next one that we wanna uh, release right now is a worldwide move of God. We pray for revival. We pray that this will become a a, a, a great awakening for believers and unbelievers alike. But I believe that when we repent and we release uh, our faith and live right for God, even during this difficult time, that we're going to see the manifestation of lives changed, souls saved in Jesus' name. So the Bible says, or rather, let's release this prayer, sorry, because it is the will of God that all men be saved. And because the global door has been opened, we ask, for a move of God across the entire world. And we pray for an awakening in every nation to our mighty savior and compassionate healer. And as a result, may all men know and declare Jesus is Lord. So we wanna pray for all of the things that I mentioned here. We wanna pray for um, the prayer of an agreement concerning protection from disease. We wanna pray a covenant of provision we want to pray for freedom from fear. We want to pray for government officials around the world. And we want to pray for a worldwide move of God in Jesus' name. 
And I believe that when we release that as believers and walk together in agreement, we're going to see a revival during this most difficult time and beyond in Jesus' name. So keep the faith. Don't give up. And may your faith be activated every single day as you go over these scriptures over and over and over again every single day and watch God do a great thing. But before we close, I want to declare one final thing. And it is this, and I want you to listen to this closely. And then when you hear this, I, you can repeat it over and over again. And here's what I want to declare. That we have victory over coronavirus in the name of Jesus. So say that with me. We have the victory over coronavirus in the name of Jesus. And we say, Satan, we bind you and your forces and render you helpless in Jesus' name. So Satan, we bind you and your forces and render you helpless in Jesus' name. We loose our angels to go forth and minister on our behalf. Say that with me. We loose our angels to go forth and minister on our behalf in Jesus' name. We are healed, protected, prosperous, and free from fear. Say that with me. We are healed, protected, prosperous, and free from fear in Jesus' name. We plead the blood of Jesus over our lives. Say that with me. We plead the blood of Jesus over our lives in Jesus' name. We are over, we overcome by the blood of Jesus or by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. Repeat that after me. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. So I want you to release that by faith in Jesus name. I want you to be encouraged. I want you to be blessed and I want you to know that you're the head and not the tail above and never beneath, that you are more than conquerors, and that you are blessed and highly favored in Jesus' name. So, Father, I release now, God, these prayers, Father God. We walk together in agreement concerning what we've heard today, and we release every scripture, Lord. May it align, Lord, uh, with our prayers in Jesus' name. And we thank you, God, that you are hearing us now, God. But Lord, we thank you, God, that you're aware of everything, Father God. And now I release your blessing over everyone who hears this, everyone who is listening to this. And may they walk out the lesson that we received today, Father God. Activate our faith and we believe and receive. And Lord, we crown it all back to you, giving you all of the honor and all of the glory. And we Thank you in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everyone said, amen. Well, well, we call you blessed and highly favored. Remember, you never walk alone and we're walking life together in Jesus' name. God bless you. Until next time, talk soon.